Over the past 50 years, thousands of children have begun their formal educations at R.C. Longan Elementary School on Maple View Avenue in Western Henrico County. The school owes its name to Robert C. Longan, who left an indelible mark across Henrico in its schools, roads, and other infrastructure, despite the limits of his own education. He'd never really finished elementary school, and one of the things that is so remarkable about all of this is uh, here we have a man uh, who had no formal education, uh, yet he ends up with a school named after him. Robert Coleman Longdon Sr. was born February 2nd, 1885 in rural Louisa County, Virginia. He was the fifth of William and Ida Longdon's eight children, five boys, three girls. The family's farm met their needs, but offered little hope for a bright future. He grew up in Louisa is our understanding. Uh, and this, this would have really been during a very different era. Uh, this would have been Louisa uh, in the shadow of Reconstruction, uh, which, which was, a, that was a tough place to live during a tough time. Uh, not a world that anybody today would, would in any way understand or recognize. But as far as, uh, as big pieces of it, it's, uh, it's kind of a mystery to us, unfortunately. We know little bits and pieces, which are quite interesting, but, but not a whole lot more than that. He left Louisa at a very young age, um, I think 13 or 14, and came to Richmond and, and went to work. The area was still reeling from the Civil War. That's what he had felt that he had to do. I know that he went to a one-room schoolhouse and the only teacher that he remembers was a Confederate veteran. And um, one thing I remember my dad would like to talk about is that my grandfather's grandfather lived in Palmyra and would have known uh, maybe Thomas Jefferson. And when you kind of connect it just by a couple of generations, you realize how fast time has gone by. So Robert Coleman Long, and sometime in the early 1900s, came to Richmond. We don't really know why, but we know he did not receive much beyond a middle school, higher elementary education from this one-room schoolhouse. He became a, a shoe salesman for the Stephen Putney Shoe Company, which was located here in Richmond. In Richmond, Longan met Ella Saunders, a woman two years his junior from Caroline County. Like Robert, she had moved to the city as a teenager in hopes of finding work and building a prosperous life. The couple married in 1912 at the First Baptist Church at 12th and Broad Streets. The family grew with the birth of two sons, Robert Coleman Jr. in 1914 and William Joseph in 1918. Robert became a psychiatrist in Richmond. Bill an oral surgeon and professor at the Medical College of Virginia. I think he came to Richmond in 1902 or 1903. He was married our grandmother in 1912 or 1913. So for 10 years, we guess he was out selling shoes around the country in the trunk, we don't know. She had to come to the city at a young age and she was a milliner. She made hats. She made me many, many hats when I was a little girl and the, all we ever knew was they met at First Baptist Church. He traveled all over the country and uh, my father used to say that uh, it, he was in uh, Oklahoma before it was a, a state. He was actually in the Oklahoma Territory. That kind of takes you back to the Wild West. Uh, but, but he traveled nationally uh, as a traveling salesman for a, for a shoe company. He started selling shoes by taking shoes tie a pair over and throw them over his shoulder, a pair over this shoulder, maybe a second pair, and he would go from house to house selling shoes. He ended up building three shoe stores in downtown Richmond. The names were embedded on, on the store. He was a successful merchant, no question about it. It was on the north side of Broad. And I think this is, this is an important part of the story in that uh, uh, we can't look at that Richmond and see the Richmond of today. Uh, that was a, a very deeply segregated world that they lived in. He had a shoe store on the north side of Broad Street, so the residents of Jackson Ward were very much his customers. 
uh, that was the community that he, he worked with, the community that knew him, and a community that he knew very well. You do have these people that come out of very modest backgrounds, but due to maybe their inner strength, due to their intelligence, they're able to adapt quickly to the new situation, and I think he falls into that category. The store stood prominently at 5th and Broad Streets, where the Greater Richmond Convention Center is today. Longin's business grew into a successful chain of stores. With that growth, he took an interest in local politics and city affairs. The Longin family lived in nearby Highland Park, one of Richmond's first streetcar neighborhoods. But in the 1940s, particularly after World War II, prosperity and the rise of the automobile drove development westward into Henrico. In 1941, Longan left Richmond and moved into a new brick colonial in Glenbrook Hills off River Road. Growth presented challenges for the county and an opportunity for Longan. In 1943, neighbors recruited him to run for the open Tuckahoe District seat on the Henrico Board of Supervisors. He won and ended up providing a reliable, stabilizing presence on the board during a period of transformation. From 1940 to 1950, Henrico's population jumped to more than 57,000, a 36% increase, despite an annexation of county land by Richmond. The county was essentially a rural county. The population of the city and elsewhere, increasing population was moving into the county. The county needed to upgrade its services in all different areas, schools, utilities, police, fire, what have you. It truly, it was a population explosion that continued and continued and continued. So that, of course, made pressing demands upon the county, both in terms of services and finances. That, those two things were the kickers. It was certainly a different Henrico County than the one we live in today. Uh, it, I, everybody should remember, and a lot of folks won't know this, that the Henrico County uh, Courthouse was on Main Street in downtown Richmond, right in the middle of Tobacco Row. There's an old tale that he used to uh, maybe have a few kind of impromptu Board of Supervisors meetings at his shoe store, that that wasn't, if somebody had a zoning question or something like that, uh, it wasn't a bad idea to go call on Mr. Longin at the shoe store. <laughs> he was a modest guy, but he certainly had very definite goals for the county in terms of what it should do. And he was very much concerned about needing new schools and needing utility services, needing new sewer services, and needing um, uh, reorganization of the county government in terms of administrative reform. He believed in all those things, but he didn't act alone. He acted in concert with the other members of the board. He didn't throw his weight around. These people reasoned together. Henrico managed the pressures from growth by investing in facilities and infrastructure, but it wasn't easy. In 1953, voters approved a $4 million bond referendum for school construction. Longan, then serving as board chairman, was ecstatic. Voters had rejected a similar measure two years earlier. Speaking to the Richmond Times-Dispatch, he relished the 10 to 1 margin of victory. He called it a landslide and said the county could manage the additional debt without a tax increase. People were moving out into the suburbs and he saw that to attract people to the area, they had to provide good education. So he, he, was, he knew that. What strikes me from a few comments I picked up from him, although he didn't have much formal education, he valued formal education for others. And that's why he was so intent upon having Henrico have good schools. He was seeing exponential growth. Nobody today can really envision uh, uh, growth that was happening during the latter part of his lifetime, let's say starting at Three Chop and heading west. He represented the Tuckahoe District. Uh, but a lot of this, these houses, a lot of that development is really happening at a, at a very quick pace and I think roads were something else that was a, was a, a material concern to him, were water roads and certainly education. Mr. Longan was a guy who didn't take credit singly, singly but he always uh, took credit on behalf of the entire members of the board. And that's why he had a very good working relationship of, with the board. There was no upmanship on his part. Although a large man physically, he was rather reserved. And he was very proud of making Henrico a better place to live. I'll never forget one of the first things I heard about him was when Henrico had its first traffic light, he was out there on the corner of Monument Avenue and Libby 
operating the, operating the new traffic signal. So without a doubt, you know, everybody talks about success of Ed Beck, which is true, but Ed Beck had the fortune of working with a very cooperative board. Neither side dominated the other. As suburban expansion continued, officials decided Henrico needed to confront the challenges and seize the opportunities associated with growth. A new master plan was adopted in 1958. It provided a blueprint for private investment and for building schools and other public facilities. Henrico was poised for a population explosion the Huguenot Bridge had opened in 1950. The route for Interstate 64 was being planned. And in 1956, the ribbon was cut on the county's first shopping mall, Willow Lawn. I remember going to the opening of Willow Lawn. Willow Lawn was the first shopping center in Henrico County. And um, he was on the Board of Supervisors then. And then uh, for the first time, the people in the West End of Richmond which then wasn't as west as it is now, um, were able to go across the James River. Longan devoted much of his time to county affairs as well as his business. He earned the trust of his colleagues on the Board of Supervisors who elected him as chairman each year from 1954 to 1959. Still, Longan found time to relax at home with family. Our parents' close friends um, bought a house as the West End was growing. Um, out near Tuckahoe Elementary. They, at that time, what is now Kanawha Pool was a hog farm. Hogs were in her backyard across the street and she didn't like it. And she knew my grandfather, R.C. Longin, very well. And she called him and she said, uh, I got hogs in my yard. And so he came over and shoot them as a farm boy would, shoot them back across the street to the pen and he told her, he goes, you know, Hermie, they were here before you. So you, you've got to get used to that. I thought, so that kind of, I think, tells you a little something he was going to help her, but he's also saying it's still rural here in a lot of ways. TV was in, a, in, its, in its early states then, so, but I do remember him watching the radio. I, uh, I, I remember that he would cut that on and kind of stare at it like it was getting ready to do something, but he enjoyed listening to the radio in a way today that we would watch TV he would listen to the radio. He never really figured out driving, apparently. He had a yellow 1957 uh, Chevrolet Bel Air, which would be quite a collector's item today. Uh, he just never kind of figured out how to drive it, and I think, uh, I believe the county kind of helped him get around in it. Uh, I don't think they really wanted him to drive it. It was not, a, not something that he really figured out how to do. He was a very quiet man and he didn't have outside hobbies. He was very home-centered. When he was not working, he was at home relaxing. And he read the paper every day, and he would walk around his yard. As Tuckahoe supervisor, Longan proved adept at managing the conflicts that occasionally pitted Henrico's proud rural past against its emerging suburban interests. Because of his new situation and where he lived, out there in the Tuckahoe district. He was developing a wider perspective, not only for Henrico, but for the entire region, especially where he had had his shoe store in the city. It only made sense to him, you know? We need to think of the region as a whole, rather than balkanized communities. Longan guided Henrico through the most contentious issues of the day, including integration of the public school system and debate over whether Henrico and Richmond should merge to address some of their challenges with growth. He did believe in greater regional cooperation. He finally retreated to the idea of people don't want merger. At least we can have more, quote, voluntary cooperation between the communities through contracts, through the Richmond Regional District Planning Commission, etc. So he was a, in that sense, he was a kind of a cosmopolitan type guy. He wasn't provincial. He did think, he did think of the whole region. Longan retired from the Board of Supervisors on December 31st, 1959, having served 16 years of remarkable change. The following day, January 1st, 1960, he suffered a heart attack and died at age 74. He's buried at Forest Lawn Cemetery he retired as, as chair of the Board of Supervisors and died the next day, the next day. So uh, uh, he, he, that may have played out perfectly for him. 
<laughs> uh, there's a lot of people that, that, that have big, active, and full lives, and uh, to have finished uh, on that note, they would look back and say, well done. Long had left such a mark on Henrico that community leaders thought of him in 1964 when a new elementary school was being planned off West End Drive. R.C. Longan Elementary was dedicated two years later in 1966. I can remember the being there that day for the dedication of the school 50 years ago. The thrill that our our father, uncle, and grandmother felt about that. They just thought it was the most fantastic tribute to somebody who had worked so hard for the county to have um, a school name for him. I think he loved his involvement with Henrico County very much. When you have the background of a strong education, it really, really helps. I think as an educator, what I truly believe, and I think the whole Longan family would agree with me, that education is the great equalizer. I am the great-granddaughter of R.C. Longan, and crazy enough, I teach fourth grade at Longan Elementary School. I think that he would be astounded at the coincidence of his great-granddaughter working at a school. You have to think that there's, that's more than just kind of a serendipitous coincidence. It's a, a little bit of fate involved in it, but it's, it's a wonderful opportunity, and I know it's something that Lindsay's gotten a big kick out of. Uh, her students probably get a big kick out of that. When they walk through the lobby and see his portrait, they can say, well, we, we have some connection uh, with, with who that is.